A few years ago, I embarked on a journey to discover the worst WWE Elite in every single WWE Main Elite Series 1 through 50, and we did that video back in the day, and that was a fun one, and I promised to do a part 2, but we never got around to it. Well, today is that day. We're going to be taking every Elite Series from 50 to 100, and we're going to be showing you the worst WWE Elite from the set, and we're going to go one by one through each individual wave, and I'll give you my criteria for it, why it was the worst, maybe give you some different information on it, and if you guys want to, if you go to Wrestling Figure Data, base. I'll leave a link in the description below if you want to pull it up at the same time of this video, or maybe you can do it on a different device. That way you can look up the Elite Wave and you can see who else is in the wave and give your opinions. But let's do it, man. We're going to start with Elite Series 51 and go all the way through Elite 100. And I'm going to name every single worst Elite from each individual wave. I forgot that we did 50 last time like an idiot. Well, that being said, man, let's dive into Elite 51. So starting things off with Elite 51, this wave was pretty decent, but at the end of the day, I went with Sami Zayn. It's a worse version of his previous Elite, and while it has a good shirt and his figures were pretty good. Head sculpt wasn't the best, and this wave overall is pretty solid, so I did go with Sami Zayn. I just think that it was the best real contender for it, and, and some of these waves that you'll see in this video, there honestly sometimes was not a good choice, and you had to kind of just split hairs at some point. Very challenging throughout. Some of them were home run hitters, but this one was Elite 51 Sami Zayn. In Elite Series 52, we saw the start of a trend of Braun Strowman, man, and then when he split away from the Wyatt family, and he did his own singles deal, they were pumping Braun Strowman out at a crazy rate. He was in every single top, he was in every single top talents wave, he was in every other elite wave, and every single time I just couldn't get over how many times they kept giving it to us, and his articulation wasn't the greatest of all time. Even though his figure kind of represented the character, I went with him for Elite 52. Elite Series 53, this Big E is definitely the worst Big E they've ever done. I, I didn't really care for this gear, he had no wrist tape, the head sculpt wasn't that great, and his figures, for the most part, they really don't pose around, uh, pose around all that well, unfortunately. I think he really deserves an Ultimate Edition. Elite 54, I went with Charlotte. A lot of people love this Charlotte, but I was never, you know, one of those people. You know, this is back when women's elites were very limited in a lot of different ways, and Charlotte's head sculpt wasn't the best here. It had a cool robe, I guess, but everything else about this figure just was lifeless, in my opinion. I did not like this Charlotte Flair figure. Elite Series 55, while this figure gets some high praise, man, James Ellsworth, this figure is not very good, man. Very stiff. Torso had no articulation. It was not very good. I did not like this figure, and a lot of the time, the formula wasn't right because he had, he had a running change. I can't remember the exact change, but the legs were weird, and you get these flesh-colored tights, and then he had the large knee pads, which prevented his, his knees from bending. It just wasn't a very good figure to me, and I think Elite 55 is actually an overall very solid wave, which is why James Ellsworth is the worst. We also have Samoa Joe for Elite 56, and Elite 56 is a pretty solid wave as well, and Samoa Joe, bless his heart, man, his formula from day one just wasn't the best, and it was kind of hard to really have him contend with some of the better Elite waves, because anytime anybody wears shorts with knee pads and kick pads, Mattel has a very difficult time kind of figuring out their formula. We see it with Kevin Owens. We see it with Solo Sokoa and these different guys. And Samoa Joe, while this figure's not bad, he's just the worst in the set. Next up, we have Elite 57. I did go with Trash Corbin. I did not like the long skinny legs, and you guys know that he's trash, but uh, I mean, besides the point, you guys know the running joke most of the time there. I just think that this figure is just not the best. He got a different formula every single time, and I thought his Elite 50 figure was much better. And this one was just an odd one, but Elite 57 is a strong wave overall, too. Not that this figure is just the worst I've ever seen, but it was the worst in this wave. Elite 58, another Braun Strowman. They kept the same Braun Strowman formula. They just threw a screaming head sculpt on there, and it's like, you're not getting this by me, Brad. I know it's the same damn Braun Strowman. I just was never a fan of his figures, man. For whatever reason, they were hit or miss but every single time it'd be the black singlet with these pants and it, sometimes they'd change the boots as you'll see but God in heaven, man, they released this figure 25 times. Elite 59 had to be the Miz, man. This this wave overall is pretty good, but this Miz figure, it was a very plain Jane gear. It had a really jack rubber coat that was awful, and then he had this really odd, weird-looking head sculpt that just threw it over the top. This one's easily the worst in Elite 59. Even though from the neck down, I kind of like it, it's just boring gear, terrible jacket, terrible head sculpt. We also have Elite 60, and this was pretty difficult because I think this Xavier Woods is not bad, but at the end of the day, he was the worst in the set, man. He was the worst in the set. I really liked the America gear. I remember when they revealed these at Comic-Con, and I really liked them. But I thought he was the worst in the set. Not the best head sculpt for him overall. Elite 61, it came down to AJ Styles and Kevin Owens. 
but I went with AJ Styles at the end of the day. His figures used to be so damn bad, man, and, and they finally are just now in modern day kind of getting to, you know, sort of restoring that and fixing that, but this AJ Styles was very missed. The colors were wrong. The head sculpt looks so derpy. It was a repeat head sculpt from Elite 56, but with true effects applied, and honestly, the true effects kind of made the, the head sculpt worse somehow. I don't know, but just not a good figure. I, I thought this was worse than Kevin Owens. In Elite 62, it's another Braun Strowman, man. His figures, man. I mean, look at that. We're getting the same thing over and over again. He wasn't very poseable. You couldn't even put his arms together, which I get. But, you know, Mattel was really behind on the butterfly joints and double jointed arms method. It was, a, they were very behind in that. But I think that this figure is just not, it's just a, it's just a newly fresh turd. You know what I mean? It's just a new turd. It's the same deal. I, I just could not stand his figures back in the day. And Elite 62 overall was a good set. We also have Elite 63. I went with Kane. There's some contenders here, but I thought the Kane was the worst. I never liked the removable mask accessory. It never looks good when you put it over there. Very boring gear. Some of the worst Kane gear I've ever seen. And uh, compared to the rest of the set, he was definitely the worst. Elite 64, again, man, Samoa Joe, bless his heart. Elite 64, one of the better Elite waves you'll ever see. And Samoa Joe, this figure is probably, I mean, arguably his best Elite. It's arguable. You, you have a couple contenders, but this one was, he's the worst in this set because the rest of the set was so damn good. You go look up Elite 64, you're dealing with some great Usos, a Seth Rollins, a John Cena, a Kurt Hawkins that we hadn't seen, so he was up against a wall in this one, and he lost the battle. Elite 65, I've gone on about this figure, man. This is one of the worst elites ever made. It's so bad. Elite 65 Ronda Rousey, man. I have discussed this at nauseum, but there are so many issues with this figure, man. Single-jointed, thick jacket arms. Belly button painted on, or t-shirt basically painted on over a belly button. She had no ankle cut, no shin cut, only thigh cut. Single-jointed legs. Her legs got super loose. This is an abysmal release. Possibly my least favorite Elite ever made. It's so bad. It's so bad. It's a terrible figure. Terrible. Elite 66 was tough, but I did go with Nikki Cross. I thought that, you know, back in the day, man, women's figures really did lack. Before they got the double-jointed knees and the double-jointed arms, and they have they have come around so much. There are so many damn good women's figures nowadays, but back then, man, Elite 66, Nikki Cross, possibly the worst figure in the set. There was a couple contenders here and there, but I thought that this one was the worst. It wasn't the greatest head sculpt of all time, and she was limited in a lot of articulation articulation wise boots were very weird too I just I could not put her any higher here and we also have Shayna Baszler in Elite 67 I almost put Velveteen Dream because of his terrible Drew McIntyre Bobby Lashley Jack torso that should never have been a thing I don't know why they gave him that torso but I went with Shayna Baszler again man basic boots very limited articulation the women's figures have just come so so far man it's unbelievable how better how much better the women's figures today or the last couple years are compared to back in the day man you can't even compare them and then with Elite 68, we're back to Braun Strowman, man. I mean, is this not the same figure you've seen 46 times already? And mind you, this is just the main Elites. There were top picks. There were two or three or four top picks Braun Strowmans that looked identical to this. It was crazy. Anybody that lived through that knows what I'm talking about. It used to drive me nuts. Elite 69, one of the better Elite Waves of all time. Rey Mysterio, surprisingly, is the worst figure in the set just because of his head sculpt. It was a dreadful head sculpt, but the rest of the set was so damn good. And I like this gear, but he had massive hands, the head sculpt wasn't that great, and he had to overcome a lot of obstacles, but this is a, this is just a wave that was so strong, he couldn't come up any, any higher. Elite 70 is Seth Rollins, and I almost went with Demon Finn Balor, because you guys know the lore on that one, if you don't know, I've went into it uh, a while, it's one of the biggest disappointment figures of all time for me, Elite 70, Demon Finn Balor, but I went with Seth Rollins, they didn't do his skin tone right, and it's just another shield Seth Rollins that we had seen so many times before, I just didn't like it, I'm not a big fan of the shield molded legs. If you've followed the channel for any amount of time, you would know that. But yeah, man, Elite 70, I go with Seth Rollins. Elite 71, I went with Nikki Bella. Again, man, look at the single jointed arms. Look at the single jointed knees. The basic boot articulation. These should not have been Elite figures, man. They sh these should not have been Elite figures. I think that you could have gotten away with... I mean, I guess they had to because basics were in their own deal. But the basic women's figures were the same as the Elites back in the day. So I don't really know what you could have done. But they were very, very limited. Elite 72 is this god-awful Velveteen Dream. Some of the worst elites you've ever seen. Just a terrible, terrible figure in a lot of ways. A lot of people hyping up this figure because they thought that it would be different, you know, different gears. And then they end up giving him these overjacked arms, this really unique, weird jack torso for no reason. It was a gear nobody had seen. They revealed this figure, I think, like the day after he debuted it. Or maybe it was like shortly before. And everybody was just dumbfounded. They were like, what the hell is even that? And it's just not good. I don't I never liked it, man. Never liked it. And there's a lot of people that'll 
defend this figure and you can help yourself but I'm not going to be one of those people. Elite 73 now this is probably the biggest sin in the whole video. Elite 73 is so stacked that you re it's really hard to pick a bad figure in this wave overall. It's a really really good wave overall and unfortunately I had to go with Elias. I just remember his boots being very weird to they they were really hard to get flat and that's kind of where this where this decision comes from because this figure is still pretty good. The entire wave is very good and I had to kind of nitpick and split hairs here and I had to go with Elias just because of that foot issue. I remember that being a big issue. For some reason his feet will not go completely flat unless you completely mat. You have to mash them really hard to get them flat so he can't even stand up so that's where I came in for this Elias figure. Elite 74 I was on the fence about a couple ones but I went with AJ Styles at the end of the day just because we've seen this figure re-released in such a much better way that this makes this the worst figure in the set. You know what I mean? I think if you throw age into it and everything like that, I think this would end up being the worst figure compared to the rest of the figure. We're up to Elite 75. I went with Jeff Hardy, and that's probably a hot take, but this head sculpt looked nothing like Jeff Hardy back in the day, man. This is a figure that just, oh man, it was so hyped up, and then it was so disappointing. It could have been so much better. If the head sculpt was good, this may be one of the better figures in the set, but it was just abysmal. It's just, it looks nothing like Jeff. This looks like Jeff's uncle, Frank. This is Frank Hardy. This is not Jeff. We also have Elite 76, which is another pretty tough wave to judge, but I did go with John Cena, and a lot of people may have issues with that, but it just lacks so much detail. I mean, there's nothing on the hat, nothing on the jersey, and he has the old John Cena shoe mold because it is that time frame. And this figure, I guess, isn't bad, but I remember a lot of them having loose waists as well. I just was not a fan of this figure that much, and I think I liked it at the time, but going back and looking at it, I think the rest of the figures are pretty good representations of the characters they portray, and I went with John Cena. For Elite 77, I went with Viscera. This figure is essentially a statue, and it should be so much better because King Mabel was so good, and there's some other really good viscera or you know there's 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 different ways they could have done this i just think the big rubber coat over the top where you can't even pose him was not the right move and so that's just what we have here man he's essentially a big old statue elite 78 i went with drake maverick kind of tough to do but he had the giant hands and so that's kind of what gave it to i think his head was a little oversized and his hands were oversized they didn't give him any different hands which they kind of struggled nowadays with Rey mysterio but i still i just can't do it man i i, did, I think this is the worst figure of the set for elite series 78 for elite 79 we're going back to big uh, he's kind of just a victim to his own formula. He, his formula makes him very hard to pose, and when you put him in a wave that's pretty damn good, it's going to be difficult to overcome. I almost I almost went with Bobby Fish, but Bobby Fish was in the War Games gear, and I couldn't put that War Games gear as the worst figure, so I did go with the Big E. And speaking of War Games, War Games is, War Games is tonight. War Games. Elite 80, I went with Bailey, man, and Bailey's not a bad figure, but man, just look at her. I remember, this is one of the first Elites, I think, that had pinless joints, and her knees were so damn stiff, and she had basic boots and single jointed arms and her head sculpt just looked a bit derpy and it could have been so much better and it just you know it's kind of just an age deal right when you compare it again to the rest of the set it was going to be hard to compete and you know the war raiders were in there there were some other good figures i just could not do it Elite 81 is Angelo Dawkins. It's not even close. This figure, I've been on record, man. This one and The Rock from Elite 81 are so damn bad. I actually hate this entire set for the because of these two figures. They're such bad figures that they bring the average of the whole wave completely to the floor. It's just not good. And this guy deserved such a better figure. And his Elite 103 shatters this figure. This figure's so bad. It's so bad, man. Just not good. Not good in a lot of ways. And I thank God that they righted that wrong because this figure is abysmal. Probably one of my least favorite favorite Elise ever. We also have Elite 82. I went with Rob Gronkowski. Kind of speaks for itself, but he's got the damn John Cena shoe mold. He's got the mankind legs. Very weird release. I love the jacket and everything like that, but it's Rob freaking Gronkowski in a WWE Elite wave. I mean, what are we doing? And Elite 82 is pretty good overall. Elite 83, I went with Dusty. No offense to Dusty. I think uh, aesthetically this figure is pretty good, but his legs couldn't move, and I think compared to the rest of the set, there's, there's not a lot of figures in the set, and it came down to him and Trash Corbin, but I, I gave the nod to this one because if I I can't move the figure. I don't want it. It's it's one of those deals. So I went with Dusty Rhodes for Elite 83. Elite 84, I went with Disciple Buddy Murphy. It's a re-release of a really good figure from Elite 72 and Buddy Murphy, but he has on the Seth Rollins tights, and he just, uh, I just didn't like this figure, man. This figure was clearanced out for like $4. It was a very moment in time figure, and it just did not do well, man. It did not do well. It was very, it's pretty much a re-release, but it's done worse, and that's kind of how it was, man. So that is why Buddy 
Eddie Murphy came in here. And I'm sure there's something else about this figure that people were griping on, but I can't remember exactly what it was. This figure did not do well. Elite 85, I went with Karrion Cross. Look at his legs, man. They gave him these long calves, long... They gave him regular kick pads with long calves and long thighs. So his guy's like 6'12", and he's just a... It's just a weird release, or it's just a weird figure in general. His Elite 93 is much, much better, and I think that this figure was not very good. They did this guy wrong on formula, and besides that, it's not that bad, but Elite 85 is a decent little set. It's not the most exciting set, but a lot of people probably put Elite 85 Bray Wyatt, but I'm actually a defender of that figure. I like the Elite 85 Bray Wyatt. Next up, Elite 86, I went with The Fiend. Now, you're probably like, how the hell is this the worst figure? And it's because this is a re-release, and we saw this multiple times over. And since it was just a straight-up re-release, I did go with the Elite 86 Fiend figure. It's not a bad figure, it's just a re-release. And really, this figure could have been done so much better, man. When you go back and look at it, which we could possibly go into another time, they kind of made him Frumpy Lumpkins. He has no sculpted belt, which would really done a lot of... That would have done him a lot of good. So, there's some different issues there that, that could be explored, but this was a re-release, which is why he's there. Elite 87, this one pained me, man, but I remember this Asuka being very, very stiff, but Elite 87, while it's not the most exciting character-wise, the entire line was very good quality, and it had a Candice LeRae that shelf-warmed, and I know a lot of people would say, oh, that Candice LeRae is way worse. I mean, if you're talking about, I guess, details and stuff, maybe, but that Candice LeRae poses around so well, and it's actually a very fun figure in hand, and so since this figure was very stiff and the rest of the wave was so good, it was very difficult to pick, and I picked Asuka, man. I think there's better Asuka figures, and this one, this is probably one of the most egregious picks, but again, Elite 87 is not a bad wave overall, and I had to split hairs on it, and I remember ranking this figure at the bottom when we ranked this set, and that hurt me then too, so it's just one of those deals, man. It's just bad timing. It's a bad, it's wrong place, wrong time kind of deal. Elite 88, it's Trish Stratus. It's not even close. This figure is one of the worst elites they've ever done. Basic boots, plain gear, painted on belly button shirt, horrific head sculpt. Looks nothing like the character. Very flat figure, cheap looking, just not good at any stretch. One of the worst elites of all time by far. Just an abysmal, abysmal piece of trash right here is this Trish Stratus Elite. Elite 89, I went with Dom Dom. Now, it came down to him and Nia Jax, but because the skin tone and different executions of this figure, I did go with the Dominic. I think, you know, he's come so far since this figure, and this figure's not bad, but when we go back and look at it, and you kind of, you know, hindsight's 2020. I think age-wise and everything, I think people would probably say this is the worst figure in the set. It's a pretty good set overall. Elite 90, I went with Reckoning, and this figure, man, dude, the, the whole entire deal of this entire storyline and everything was just bad, and this figure's not the worst I've ever seen, but the best thing you can do with this figure is convert it into an elite Tony Storm, and when the best thing about your figure is that, I mean, you're probably pretty bad, and this figure, representation of the character is pretty good. I just, you compare it to the rest of the set, man, this is the worst. This is the worst, and that's just the way the cookie crumbled. Elite 91, I went with Austin Theory, another tough one, because this Austin Theory, He's a guy that actually has a lot of good figures. A lot of his figures are really good, but he has a damn bobblehead, man. His head is massive. It's a massive head sculpt, and I think that, you know, that's just the way that it was here. His head sculpt was massive, and that's what took him down as the worst figure, man. When you got up into these, you know, these later Elite Series as we approached 100, there were so many good figures, and the lines as a whole were so quality that it was very tough. And then Elite 92, another one. I went with Rey Mysterio because we had seen this figure so many times over. So many times over, and while it does pose around well, and it's an okay gear, it's really not. It's not that. I never like this gear. It's kind of a Halloween gear. It is just the fact of the matter that this is what we were able to play with, man. I mean, you had to pick this figure. It was either this, Charlotte, or Scarlet, and I went with the Rey Mysterio because I think the Charlotte's pretty good, and I think I ranked her at the bottom when we ranked this set, but I just think that they could have done much better here for Rey Mysterio, at least the gear choice. Better gear, he probably would be higher than the rest. Elite 93, I went with Raquel, and this one kind of pains me, but I remember her legs being so loose. Her boots and her legs were very loose, and the rest of Elite 93 was pretty quality, and her shoulders got stuck a lot, which kind of, you know, was what it was. Aesthetically, really good figure, and there's some good things here. I just think overall, it's not as good as other figures. And Elite 94, I went with Mace, and this one, again, man, going back to the Reckoning and everything, man, this entire thing, this used to just bore the hell out of me. I never understood. This is back at a dark time in WWE to me, man. It was not good television, and this right here was just the embodiment of that. I mean, look at the head sculpt on this. He has some cool sculpts and stuff, but he's very, very stiff. You couldn't really articulate his legs either, and bless him, because he's a cool dude, and a cool mask and everything. I just, I, I don't like the figure. Elite 95, 
25, we have another Big E, man. Another Big E figure again. And this is probably the best Big E we've seen on this list so far. But this is off his WWE title reign. Really good singlet color and boots and everything. It's just compared to Elite 95, man, go back and look at the tape. Go back and look at Elite 95. Really strong wave, and I had to give it to somebody. And I think this is the figure I'd least like to have. So Big E came in at Elite 95. Elite 96, I went with Dewdrop. They did not do her gear right, and I was not the biggest fan of Dewdrop at the time here. And so I did go with her. And again, Elite 96 is pretty solid overall. They have a lot of good quality figures in there. If it wasn't this one, it would probably be Elia Dragunov because his head sculpt was so damn bad. But I think I'd rather have the Elia over the Dewdrop figure at the end of the day. And I just remember they do they did her gear wrong. It was supposed to be this glittery attire and they went with this really flat pale blue. Elite 97 is Ronda Rousey. And I actually defend this figure, but it's so damn plain Jane and it's a head sculpt we've seen before and it's very, very plain. You know, you've got the double jointed arms, you've got the double jointed knees. It poses around pretty good, but you know, the diet frame movement's a little limited. They got rid of the belly button painted over deal, but at the end of the day, it's just such a plain figure that it did her no service here in Elite Series 97, and Elite 97's pretty solid overall. If you go back and look, man, I mean, again, when you got into these later waves, it was like splitting hairs. There were so many different opportunities, and it was really difficult to judge. I mean, you had to, you have to pick one, and that's what the, that's the, what I had to do here. Elite 98 is Mandy Rose, and I almost, I shish you not, I almost went with the Demon Finn Balor, and at the end of the day, I was like, that is a demon Finn Balor. You cannot put that as the worst elite. But I wanted to, man, because they gave him Daniel Bryan legs. And I remember being so disappointed in that. I just thought that was so bad. I know nobody really cares about it but me. But the small legs they give Finn Balor is crazy, man. When you look at when you look at the different legs, I mean, dude, look at like Chris Jericho or like these other characters that are similar heights and stuff like that to Finn Balor. And they make his legs tiny and you compare them to you know, other figures, and he's way, way shorter. It's just ugly to look at, but this figure's not bad, per se, but I had to pick one, and I think sometimes her face can be a little weird, depending on which, you know, the how the paint apps are applied. Elite 99, I went with Queen Zelina. She has basic boots, and I mean, again, man, Elite 99's a pretty stacked wave, man. What do you want? It's not a bad figure. It's just I had to pick one. I had to pick one, unfortunately, and that's what we have here for Elite 99. And then last but not least, Elite 100, again, I had to pick one, but this figure, Becky Lynch, man, they always give her the basic boots, and her head's looked like a damn avatar or something. Her head, like her eyes were way too big. It looks nothing like Becky Lynch. It looks like a cartoon or an anime or something. I just do not like this head sculpt. I think they could have done so much better here for Becky. And I know a lot of people would probably say that Becky was a weird inclusion in this line anyway, but I don't mind having a women's talent here. It's just the, I don't know, the jacket was rubber. There was like some different things for Elite 100 that just, I don't know. I just, you know, I love white gear and everything. I just thought that this figure was the worst out of everything. When you compare it to every figure in the set, and I almost went with The Rock because of how bad I hate that figure, but I think I'd rather have The Rock over this Becky Lynch when you consider the Brahma Bull title and the jersey and everything like that. But, and that pretty much concludes the worst Elite from Series 51 through 100, man. I hope you guys did enjoy. I'd love to know your thoughts on these. Where do you disagree? Where do you agree, man? Let me know all those things things down in the comment section below, but I think that's pretty much going to wrap the video. Again, man, it came down to splitting hair sometimes, and it was very difficult, but hopefully you guys enjoyed the video anyway, and I'd love to know your thoughts, man, but I'm getting the hell out. A huge shout out to our Patreon members, man. I appreciate you fellas so much. You guys are absolutely goaded. Thank you guys so very much for everything, man, but I'm getting the hell out. I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a blessed one, and I'll catch you guys later.